<laughs> Do it again. <clears throat> Mama made me mash my m ms I don't actually do that every time. <laughs> uh, welcome to One Foot on the Ground. This is Johnny. And this is Ashley. And today we are watching... Oh, Miss Congeniality. 2000. We're also joined by a, a special guest today. Uh, it is uh, Rachel Gilmore. Rachel, hello. Hello, Ashley. How are you? I'm well, thank you. What about Johnny? Excellent. That was rude. I was getting to Johnny. I wanted to give you both the same amount of attention. Go ahead. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> are we talking about me? Yeah, Hello. how are you? Oh, uh, me, uh, I'm good. Good. Great. Fabulous. Armed and fabulous. I love water, but it's on the other side of the room, and I don't feel like moving. Fair. Perfect. Um, uh, so Miss Congeniality was 2000, really? Yes, yeah. sir. December 14th. It was a December movie, too. I was a little more surprised by it being a December flick. Really? It was December? I didn't know yeah. that. I didn't know that either. Feels like a summery kind of film. Right? I, I would say spring. Okay, maybe spring. Whatever. Like, sh short sleeve weather. Or like Which, well, in Florida, it might be short sleeve <laughs> weather, so. <laughs> all, all months except for December, maybe. Maybe. Oh, just parts of December, maybe. Or January, who knows? Jan. January is the coldest month, I believe, in Florida. Is it really? I think I mean, so. How can you tell them apart? I don't know. One has five cold days and the others have three. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> yeah, you know what? <laughs> Nail on the head. <laughs> so what is this? Who's going to take the uh, description of the movie? Oh, that's going to be uh, Gilmore. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to go off the cuff. Um, uh, yeah, just give us your interpretation of the flick. Great. Uh, Miss Congeniality is a movie about a plain Jane named Grace, who um, is a an FBI agent, and she has to uh, go into the Miss, Miss United States pageant uh, to figure out uh, who is plotting to do some sort of attack. Um, and... Uh, she she becomes uh you know her eyes open to the world of miss united states pageant and uh hilarity ensues and that is my hot take i think you nailed it okay i don't want to give too much away you know like not yet <laughs> <laughs> i mean to be fair it has been t almost 20 years 19 20 years so Listen. i mean spoiler this is a spoiler friendly podcast um look she becomes miss congeniality okay spoiler <laughs> what spoilers. Does that even, all right so what does miss congeniality mean so uh congeniality uh i believe and you can fact check me on this by googling Gunna. the word congeniality i think mm -hmm. it just means like the most friendly and outgoing um and the person who inspires the most uh, uh fun um, oh so that's why sandra bullock was voted miss congeniality on set not because she played the role but because she was the friendliest person that sounds accurate, despite what the tabloids may tell you. Do the tabloids say that Sandy Bull is like a meanie Some, pants? I, I think they try and portray her as a little bit of a meanie pants. I'm basing you know, this off of a Graham I, Norton interview that I watched two days ago. <laughs> I would bet money that it's because she's a woman. <gasps> yeah, me too. She does. I mean, I'm serious. Pro I mean, probably. In fact, so this is not related to Miss Congeniality, but it probably applies. So the interview I was watching was actually for Ocean's 8. And she said that they were trying to, like, pin that every woman was not getting along with the other women because, God forbid, women are able to get along. And <laughs> yeah. Congeniality is a very, you know, women-friendly cast, minus Benjamin Bratt and Michael Caine and all the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like to say, well, um, where are we go? What, what, what is? Uh, hold, I don't want to go too far ahead of myself. I'll go for it. Who cares? Jump right in. <laughs> uh, so, 
I haven't watched this movie in a very, very long time. And it, I watch it, like I said, today. And I loved parts of it, but parts of it I had a huge problem with. And Like also, it didn't age well? No, it did not age well. No. Not at all. Um, Neither did I, but here we are. I mean, I certainly <laughs> did. But, uh, I, I thought to myself, in fact, one of my notes was, um, where is it? What I don't know where it is. Whatever. Like, <laughs> we'll find it. Can actually enjoy this movie. That was one of my questions because I was like, I don't think gay men would really appreciate this movie very much. Oh well, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Some of it, the yeah, it's not very um, open-minded. Like even the way it's scripted, like Benjamin Bratt was like kind of a dick about it. And was trying to like run away from any homosexual activity or or anything. That yeah. was the the comedy of the '90s. Was like yeah. you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, right? With being gay. Yeah, I mean that was a reference to Seinfeld, but it's fine. So oh, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's okay. The Jew will make the Seinfeld references, and we'll be on our merry way. So um, uh, yeah, no, but for sure. I, and you know, when I go back and watch it now, the I mean, when I was eleven watching it for the first time, those were not the scenes that stuck out to me. So you know, but now as an adult, I watch it, and I'm like, all right, well, I could give or take that joke, but the other jokes, it's the other you know fun that makes it yeah fun. it's the overall arc yeah yeah i i have to say anything with women loved it like seriously every time sandra was on the screen with any other woman i loved it i thought that it was handled well and it probably has a lot to do with her because sure. I feel like she is the kind of woman that would nurture that kind of environment but when it was the men especially if sandra wasn't even in the scene when the men were just talking amongst themselves and having their thing, those yeah. were the most problematic moments. And I was like, oh, this is not very good. Like the one guy uh, referring to Michael Caine as Liberace, and I was like, uh, that's not very friendly. Like, no. okay. Uh, but I will say for Michael Caine, I didn't, it didn't even occur to me. I, I don't know. I, I mean, obviously I watched this, like I said, a long time ago. So there's a lot of stuff that popped up that I was just kind of like, oh, wow, I didn't think about this. Like Michael playing, uh, Michael Caine playing um, an older gay gentleman was interesting and he did it very well. It wasn't offensive. No, he wasn't. In I fact, mean, I'm not an older gay man, but it didn't seem offensive. No, it, <laughs> especially for that time. Like I said, with all the other jokes thrown in there, it was interesting that he wasn't a stereotype that was like all the jokes about him were stereotypical and annoying but the character himself, itself yeah yeah he played that beautifully and it was interesting that he would have played that to begin with because he like his uh, youthful acting was a lot of like kind of manly men kind of like he played alfie yeah over time. like yeah. the italian job mm-hmm yeah, yeah, so he, he's, uh, he's a, uh, I wouldn't have expected that. And it, it didn't occur, like I said, it didn't occur to me until today. I was like, oh, wait, what? You know, Michael, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Um, so good for him. I, I think he's fantastic. But, um, and like I said, he did a good job. Some of the other things that bothered me current day was, as far as women go, it was annoying to see like all the different states being portrayed in a very stereotypical way. Sure. Oh, they were caricatures of themselves for yeah, sure. They, yeah, and right. I think that was probably part of the satire, but I don't think you'd see it as much anymore. No, I don't think that would happen. At right, all. yeah, sure. Um, I mean, you know, it had its moment, it was fine. But um, yeah. Anyway, that was that was that was were all my issues. That I did put down on my notes. Uh, men are terrible. Yeah, all the men in the film were garbage. Just like garbage yeah. humans. Like even the guy checking them in when he was like Texas ass. <laughs> you know, like, oh yeah, that's right. The, the just like harassing them outright as he said each person's name, gave him a special little something. Yeah, but that was that was <laughs> Kathy Morningside's. Uh, 
son. Yeah, yeah, he was no. supposed to be a terrible person. He was like, Washington, <laughs> nice apples. Um, like, just, it's just, a, I know the whole movie by heart, so I will refrain. She's like, you come um, up with but, that one on your own? He's like, on your own? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but like, you know, I, I'm someone who tends to, to say, like, nothing really offends me very much, so I can watch that and be like, that's absolutely disgusting, and it's a stupid joke, but, like, it's just part of a, the movie that I really like, so I just yeah, laugh at it. Yeah, normally, and... I'm just like, it was the 90s. <laughs> just like that, by the way? Yeah, just, yeah, no, just like was... that. With like, Mostly, usually with, like, um, a cigarette, with one of the cigarette extenders. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Corolla Deville style. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like going yeah. back and watching Friends. Like, a lot of the stuff on Friends <laughs> didn't... I <forget> that. Didn't... <laughs> didn't really uh age well um but i still think it's funny call me a terrible person um but oh, I still think yeah it's, it's fine i i Straight up, yeah i am a <laughs> terrible per- i married a man for his last name <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's truly uh terrible uh, i uh first of all for gilmore girls is that why yes yes my pops are downstairs i i love that show <laughs> my pops are downstairs <laughs> was fantastic. Was it? So what cool? a line! Uh, she, uh, falling apart. Uh, as soon as I was having to work from home, I was like, I need something on the background that I can not necessarily watch, but I, you know, something I've seen a lot of, so I can just have it on. And that was my first choice because it, it's one of those where I don't have to actually watch it. And I did, yeah, it was kind of that thing where it was like, oh, crap, a lot of this is pretty bad. Like, especially Ross. <laughs> he was just, there was so much not good. Yeah, there. why would anyone like Ross? I kept thinking, because I also watched Indiana Jones right in the middle of all that. And I was like, why didn't Ross ever go on a dig or anything? Like, he was always just in New York. Like, did he never do any actual digging for his archaeology or what paleontology shit like like i think he was just a teacher i think he was like no no, no. he was an active paleontologist i mean he worked was he he was like way too lame i thought to like be like getting dirt under his nails the only excavating he ever did was bone rachel in the display (laughs) 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 rachel was stupid in they rest- would never allow that. <laughs> no, I mean, besides the fact that they were in the planetarium when they started, like, why did they go over to that display all of a sudden? I mean, it was for the joke, but it was like, uh, that was kind of dumb. A little forced. So, where were we going with all that? Friends, the 90s? Well, oh, you, were co- you were complaining. No, I'm just kidding. You were saying the, the, <laughs> the things about the movie you didn't like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, uh, granted, uh, I was not I'm, not, I'm not necessarily offended by any of it. Sure, sure, sure. Because I, I don't, I don't really give a shit. I but, mean, I do no, I no, just, I watch stuff, and I'm like, Ooh, that wasn't cool. I was just looking at it in that in that scene, just like I did with Friends recently. I mean, I still love Friends. I'm still gonna watch it again someday. But, um, you know, why it was like, oh shit, that's oof, oh gosh, um, yeah, <laughs> kind of crazy, uh, kind of crazy. But, Beyond that, uh, oh, a couple of things. The BFI dumpster. I don't know if anybody noticed that. So at the very opening, during the Rachel space, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a dumpster outside of the restaurant where they're doing yep. the wake-up thing. Yeah, and La well, Bamba is like in. What? La Bamba. What's his name? Benjamin, Benjamin. Bratt. Benjamin Bratt. He, he was outside of it, pretending to be a, 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 yeah, he a was like homeless person. Can. He was hot as the homeless person, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, only $5. I uh, <laughs> wondered how long it was going to take. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes, less than 10. <laughs> he, uh, well, I don't think he's generally very attractive normally. Like, like, in fact, throughout the whole movie, I kept thinking she could do better. Um, <laughs> Miss Miss Texas was right there. I don't I don't understand. Uh I mean why she didn't go for Miss Texas? Yes, I don't get it. <laughs> oh. Because uh again, the gays weren't That's true. They were accepted, but not they weren't ready to be like in the public's eye. 
There was uh, Miss New York made it uh, to the top ten, and she made a big, uh, big uh, scene about it. And shout out to her wife or yeah, little wife. Oh, okay. it was her. It was her partner. Uh, you know, I just want all the lesbians out there to know that if I can make it to the top ten, so can you. I thought that was yeah. I mean, I guess you do have to think of it in a in a time capsule situation. You do. Like, yeah. you to do that because yeah, they I mean, tried. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine trying to watch that movie now with those computers? I could, I, I, I want to remember it, liking it. I want to go back and watch the net and find out how terrible it's. Just like Jumpin' Jack Flash with Whoopi Goldberg. Like I love that movie, but I watched it as an adult and I was like, oh wow, that computer. Like that's the internet. What? <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> With the the black screen, even watching The Matrix, I just watched that recently, and I was like, "This was 1999. Like, why weren't the computers better? Like, it was weird to me." Um, special okay. effects were amazing, though. But they had a super um, like so. Gracie Hart is like a, a rough and tough lady who, um, just like in She's All That and all other like 90s oh. film. I know it released in 2000, but it was definitely a 90s. It was a 90s. 90, it was a commentary yeah. on the 90s. 100%. Yeah. So like all she 90s. had to do was undo that ponytail, remove her glasses, and she was hot. Yeah. Um, except they made a whole production about it and like getting her like waxed. And they couldn't just do that at public venues. They needed like a men in black like <laughs> sort of cool. like that up who would even do that <laughs> wax the knuckles yeah like i was like uh nobody does that uh, um a beautiful woman can have no hair apart from the hair no hair yeah <laughs> no hair no, yeah I've she got a bikini wax she got a knuckle wax legs mm -hmm. armpits all of it yeah i mean Chin for uh, sure no <laughs> no 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 waxing uh <laughs> i will say I wrote a note about that, like when they were trying to figure out an agent to put into the pageant, and Sander was sitting there the whole time, and I kept thinking, "You guys are fucking idiots!" Like, she's an attractive woman. I don't care who you are, but I mean, attractive. Yeah, but that that was the point is that they they you know they 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 just saw her as one of the dudes. I mean, I, I get. Yeah, that. she was too frumpy, John. She was too frumpy. I'm, maybe it's me because I'm gay or something. I don't know. But I would have noticed right away, like, uh, hello? Like, well, I'm no, like, Sandra Bullock is like a babe. She's super the babe of babes. Yeah. Uh, seriously, that woman is ridiculously attractive. But, yeah, agree. Um, yeah. yeah, they were dumb. They were super dumb for not <laughs> noticing that quicker. And then, of course, when they had the, I will say, though, when they revealed her coming out of the, the hangar, she looked good. I was Mustang, like, Mustang, oh, Sally. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Get it, girl. I wish I looked like that coming out of a hangar. Like, you oh. can too. I wish I looked like that. I mean, yeah, I'd look like Sandra <laughs> <laughs> We all wish we looked like Sandra Bullock. Yeah. I mean, look at me right now. I'm... No. Uh, uh, so, um, so I mentioned, the, oh, the BFI dumpster. I never finished that. So No, no, we interrupted you. I was on the dumpster and I kept thinking British Film Institute? Like, why do they have a dumpster? That was just me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we probably could have, we probably could have interrupted him and kept going. It probably would have been okay. Yeah, it, it's really <laughs> not interesting. Except for the <laughs> BFI, I, could, I kept thinking like, what does BFI stand for other than British Film Institute? Like, I really don't know. I couldn't couldn't piece that one together i thought maybe it was supposed to be a joke or something maybe well, that was their commentary isn't, but isn't bfi a garbage company i'm pretty oh we're gonna look it up because well, i have the power it? of the internet well let me mute because my keyboard's clacky hold on oh you're fine. clacky my keyboard's clacky but they also had old tech in this like her browning her furnace industries is that what that really is? BFI. I know exactly the, the when you said BFI, I knew the logo. I'm very good at logos. Um, and so <laughs> I, <laughs> I see it here and yes. Huh. No, I mean, I automatically thought British Film Institute because I own a lot of BFI films. And I own a lot of garbage. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, 
old tech. They had they had some old, not too much, but they had some like oh, yeah. video, video equipment for the first stakeout. <laughs> with the little book, <laughs> with the <laughs> book in the spine, in the spine, screen, <laughs> in the pages. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, the Starbucks scene was fantastic, and I remember when that came out the first time. That was right when Starbucks was massive. Like yeah. that was, yeah, like, it was very interesting because it. I had a flashback to remembering seeing that in the theater and being like. Oh, I remember that scene because I worked at a Starbucks as well. So it was kind of like, what? Um, <laughs> yeah, and people were super pumped to learn that those were real Starbucks employees. In that uh, scene? Oh, well, yeah. That, Poorly that, marking the cups. Yeah. I was going to bring that up because at that point, also in films and, and all that kind of stuff, uh, Starbucks was very particular about being portrayed in anything so you had to ask permission no matter what if you were going to film in a starbucks or use starbucks in your whatever um because they that that was way before they started doing advertising at all like they didn't have commercials they didn't have print ads they didn't have anything so if you were going to put those in your movie or something you had to get like even at stores like we had policies about you couldn't take pictures like you weren't allowed to like if we saw people taking pictures, we were supposed to stop them from taking pictures and be like, I'm ah. sorry, there's pictures in here. Um, <laughs> They're like, but my Frappuccino, my Insta. I mean, this was way. There was no Insta yeah. back there, honey. Oh, uh, yeah. But, you know, the early adopters. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I did work for Starbucks when Instagram started. I'm trying to think back. I When, when, when did that start? I like, guess oh. actually, yeah. And like. 2010 or so yeah I was say. so say yeah 2000. but but it, so it was kind of interesting to see that in there and to know that like those you know like you said those were probably actual baristas working in an actual store and <laughs> those are probably actual customers that got pissed they couldn't have their coffee on time october 2010 gilmore you got it look at you go so proud hey i know my stuff nice I actually remember getting it really early on. And then, of course, I've deleted many drunken times. Yeah, John deletes his accounts from time to time. I actually have learned not, well, I don't drink anymore. So that probably helps. But <laughs> but I also, I've learned to uh, deactivate rather than delete. I'm it's becoming fine. more mature with my social media anger. <laughs> I just deactivate. I did it recently. Nobody noticed. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I don't, honestly, I only look at feeds. I don't go to people's pages. I'm not going to lie. You don't care about me. It's fine. That's what I said. Yep. Those are the words that came out of your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> like, I just scroll through a feed for like four or five swipes and then I'm done with it and then I. Carry on. Yeah, I, get Carry on. I get annoyed with social media in general. Yeah, that's fair. Why it's scary that I'm the one that mostly does our social media stuff, especially when <laughs> I deactivating things. Uh, I haven't done it with ours, though. Ours have always been. Uh, I think you might also be obligated to keep ours because I'm in the picture. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, I'd be like, hello. <laughs> Are we done? We're Are done. You up with me? <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> I've deactivated everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so anyway, so yeah, but, so Gracie Hart gets picked up by Michael Caine, and uh, with amazing. extensive work, she will be ready for the finest trailer park, the world's oh. finest trailer park. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, apologies. Right, that's okay. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> um, I only slaved over that script. Um, but the, yeah, no. And so she gets picked up. And mm -hmm. um, I, I think for me, one of the one of the funniest scenes in the movie for two reasons, A, because it's funny, uh, is yeah. when they're flying, after she is no longer Dirty Harriet, uh, she, they're on the plane and she's watching a video of <laughs> magic women crying uh, so that she can pick which cry she wants to do uh, 
<laughs> and the reason why it's so funny is just a again because it's funny and then she ends up with the you know the the waving her hands uh crying <laughs> uh, thing um but in that scene there is a guy sitting a few rows behind her and he's kind of like he's sleeping with his head like at a profile and it looks like my dad <laughs> <laughs> and so as a child, I actually remember the first time I watched Miss Congeniality, it was, I was, I was like 11. So I was like in my parents' bed, you know, watching it with, with them, uh, on their TV. And I remember wa seeing that scene and doing like a, is dad, <laughs> dad, are you, are, are you in this movie? And he was like, what are you talking about? And he like, he, he does he didn't see it. So, um, you know, for, for one of the uh, one of the stories attached to this movie is that after I watched it that fateful night with my father and uh, mo mother, um, they took me to Hollywood Video. I rented the movie and watched it. It was during the summer, seven times a day uh, for a week, and I <laughs> and I broke the VHS. And because I was a cute eleven year old, I walked back into the store, and I said. Um, hi, the the VHS broke, uh, but I still had a few days left on this rental, and they gave me another one. Um, so, <laughs> so, um, so you they, could continue your binge. So I could continue binging, uh, and I finally one day was like, "Dad, this looks like you," and he was like, "If you say it does, it does." So, like every time I see that now, it's still this is very funny, uh, um, funny scene. Yeah. So the, for you know, I don't know if, if this was even said, but Miss Congeniality is my favorite movie. Um, and so that's why I'm here talking about it. But oh yeah, that's uh, that's why Gilmore's qualifications. Yeah, they were like, I, I was like, Ashley, you wouldn't even <laughs> let me on your show, <laughs> and she was like, um, why? Do, why would I even let you on my show? And I said, well, I've seen Miss Congeniality at least 49 times because <laughs> I. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, so that scene is my dad's in it, um, and she learns how to cry, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mother when I was a kid I learned my mother was um when she was a youth she was doing a lot of modeling and like acting and I had learned early on that and I don't know any of the other films she was in she may have told me but the one thing I remembered was that she was in also a problematic film Revenge of the Nerds part three oh. and she I got excited for a second. Right? And so I would watch that movie over and over again looking for her. Um, and she'd be like, they cut my scenes. <laughs> I'd be like, I bet I could find you in the background. Um, That's funny. But yeah, but I was watching the wrong ones. I was watching the first and second one because um, I thought that she would at least be in those. But I guess the third one, they went to Fort Lauderdale. And um, that's the one she was in. I was going to say, when you said Ner Revenge of the Nerds, I was thinking, oh, cool. And then you said the third, and I kept thinking, was there a third? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember two very distinctly, but I, I don't remember it. In fact, I think I've only seen the second one. I never saw the first one. Oh, so I love Revenge of the Nerds, but that's also a very problematic movie, especially the scene where the girl gets raped, I but think, like by one of the nerds. Any of those movies that we grew up with are like that seriously no all of them they've all got problems well yeah. i think you know 20 years from now when we look back at movies that were made this year we're gonna be we're like gonna be like wow we did wow good. <laughs> so we did good <laughs> well, we look did. at our growth <laughs> we did it guys we made it <laughs> i'm gonna be like this stuff's too clean i want i want that offensive humor back <laughs> I mean, I do, I do think about that a lot, like offensive humor, like, I don't know, like, can you even do that? I, I can't think of an example, but like, I feel like everything's kind of cleaned up now. So, I mean, I guess I think, there's different ways of making something funny. Like, I think a lot of humor now is smarter. Yes. Than it Intellectual comedy is what I would which is which is fine but i don't know every once in a while i don't mind laughing at something that was funny when i was a kid <laughs> sure of course not oh absolutely um, yeah. i mean geez there's so many of them but so many awful awful things that we laugh at <laughs> <laughs> no. 
I was going to say, yeah. along with your story about watching this as a kid, when, um, and I might have brought this up on the podcast before, but that same kind of thing happened with me and Thoroughly Modern Millie. I was obsessed with that movie as a very, very young, 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 young kid. And don't know why. I have no idea why it, it stuck out of my head, but I always told my mom that I liked the movie where her boobs popped out. And <laughs> her boobs don't actually, you don't see her boobs in this movie, but she, uh, at the very beginning of the movie, she buys a corset to flatten her chest because flat chest is popular at the time. It was 1922. So <laughs> she got a corset to flatten out her chest. And then while she's buying cigarettes, the corset pops and her boobs like pop and her beads go flying. It's fantastic. And so I'd always tell my mom, like, I, I think see I've seen that moment parodied in like many other films. You probably have. It's, it's yeah. so parodiable. <laughs> <laughs> That's a word. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, uh, finally, I mean, this was, I, I can't remember how old I was. I might have been um, 10, 11, 12, something like that. But my sisters ended up uh, going to swim competitions a little bit because they were athletic and I was not. <laughs> and I certainly was not going to wear Speedo in front of their boys because that would have been an issue. Um <laughs> <laughs> Are speedos the only option yeah they you're in a swim team that's all you oh would okay apologies swim team, yeah. Yeah, swim team. competitive swimming so but anyway so whatever anyway so uh, my mom eventually taped it off the disney channel and had a a copy of it so i was so excited so whenever they would go out for the weekend to a swim competition i would stay at home and thoroughly modern movie was literally my babysitter like i would watch it and then as soon as it was done, I'd rewind it and watch it again. And I, so when I say that I've seen that film thousands of times, I'm not exaggerating. I have literally, I can recite the entire two hours and 18 minutes of it without seeing it. I know it better than any other movie I've ever seen. So I can relate. To yeah, that's it. That Miss Congeniality for me, 100%. My VHS. Really problematic? Probably. Yeah, <laughs> my VHS babysitter was Scream. I watched that movie <laughs> a ton <laughs> when people weren't home. I would just be like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why well, do we all have some of those? I, I think it's funny that mine would be something like that, and it wouldn't be something that I wasn't allowed to watch. Like, I watched mine with people home. <laughs> oh, I mean, I did too. But I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Yeah, no, same. I think I think all these movies though, these three movies are very like cornerstones of our personalities though. Yeah, and I know I know that uh John doesn't know me very well, but I'm pretty much a walking miscongeniality. Uh and Laura like yeah. Gilmore, but that's a different show. Um <laughs> so uh but yeah, like it's basically just Grace Hart coming out of my mouth uh all the time. It's it's true. Sometimes, sometimes she'll quote it so much that she likes to remind me that it's from Miss Congeniality. Oh, I do that to people. I'll quote yeah. things constantly and nobody ever gets what I'm quoting ever. So <laughs> I'd always have to tag on, well, that was from this, or that was from this, or, oh, that was a quote from this. <laughs> All the time. Nobody yeah, I like to let it sit and let them think I'm weird. Nobody watches movies anymore, I swear. I'm convinced. Yeah. Or if they do, they watch crappy ones. I guess. Well, yeah, maybe. Like, John, there is, like, 26 Avenger movies. Well, yeah. Marvel movies. So. I mean... They got a lot to to catch up on. Are any of those quotable? Probably not. No, not really. And I'm not trying to say that they're bad movies. No, I mean, they're, they're enjoyable entertainment. They're not quotable. They're not quotable. They're not Washington quotable. Nice Apples, quotable. <laughs> something i quote so often to my staff and i am a firm believer that you should not tell a person to smile like i hate it as long I as you hate it yeah smilers wear frown losers, losers wear frown <laughs> yeah uh, oh, favorite line. it's just such it's quotable <laughs> i yeah. will say candace bergen also looked very good in this movie oh she looked great she did um oh absolutely she yeah well this was what two you said it was two thousand so yeah they were filming oh, it two thousand and one what what 
Oops, it was in December. I was just being a butthole. Oh, <laughs> easy, man. I was like, you, you, you set the wrong date then. Uh, no, I was gonna say when she, because I mentioned this before too. When when she was in Sex and City the movie, <laughs> like when she showed up on the screen, the entire audience gasped, and not in like a they're excited to see her way. They were like, oh my god, and I was like. I felt so bad for Candace Burton because all I could think was, did that happen when she was in the theater? Like, oh and, my goodness. Because I, I don't think they put the airbrushing budget on her at all. They put it on the other girls because those girls were airbrushing that movie to death. I mean, those necks and those yeah. foreheads are not their necks and foreheads. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they Who's didn't put uh, <laughs> <laughs> teenage donuts they really did like if you ever watch that at home it's so it's like this like you get up close to your television and all you see is like this blurry thing here and a blurry thing here on their neck oh you uh, this is an audio format sorry guys i'm i'm indicating portions of my anatomy i won't tell you which ones so um <laughs> <laughs> but no, Candace Burke. And then, like the next movie she was in was was it Bride Wars? I think. And all oh, I could yeah. think was they they either airbrushed her for that one or she got something done because I was like she must have known that people had that reaction because she looked fantastic in Bride Wars. She did, yeah, she did. She really did. So um, like, but yes, yeah, she did look good in in Miss Congeniality. Uh, yeah. And for me, like Grace Hart is, you know, she's the best. She's she's great. But like, uh, wow, I just oh, Kathy, Kathy, Kathy Morningside. She was so funny. Uh, her character okay. was just top notch in this movie. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. He's a good villain. Very good, good villain. villain. Yeah. Yeah. Very close to Disney villain. Just very good. Yeah. I was yeah. Glad. Well, I have to say though, I feel like I remember knowing that it was her very early on. Well, they kind of I think they kind of make it known that it's her without making you know until what three quarters of the way in. Yeah, you need to suspicion that it's her. Yeah, well, I guess so, yeah. But then when they mentioned that I well, because I think they were maybe trying to get you to think it was William Shatner, right? Or maybe I'm just thinking. Well, she tries to she tries to get you to think that it's you. She tries to get them to think that it's him. Uh, I was there, and then <laughs> but then there's that there's that part um, after the fiasco that uh, takes place uh, with the drinking glasses, and Grace uh, Gracie Lou Freebush jumps out into the audience to tackle the guy who's trying to light a cigarette, and then later on there's a scene uh, where. Um, I forgot the what is his Eric, Eric uh, who played by Benjamin Bratt comes into the room and is like, "Call oh, La Bamba." We know who he is. I don't know what Honestly, that reference is. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what that reference is. So I'm <laughs> going to call him Eric because that's his name in the movie we're talking <laughs> about. Um, so he comes in and he's like, "Oh, we got the DNA back uh, from," oh, yeah, yeah. and it was a woman. And she and they cut over to her and she makes that face, and that's when you know uh, you're like, "Oh shit, it's her." uh and but they don't know you know yeah. and so yeah uh i think that they want you to know it's like one of those where we know before they know but then they figure it out and then hilarity continues to ensue it's, like a <laughs> it's fantastic right we know that we know that <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> that held up is very funny by the way for the friends <laughs> the what for the friends episode like, they but all... they know that I know that you know, and if they know that you know that I know, then I can't know. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> was like, he's like, I couldn't tell them even if I wanted to. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was still funny. It's Phoebe. Oh my god, that's so good. Anyway, not the point. So, uh, what else was I going to say? I had something to say and I forgot it about this movie and not Friends. Darn it. I sent you a picture of Ooh. La Bamba. Both of you. I, know, I mean, I know what you're talking about, but it takes my brain too long to figure out what you're talking about. That's I have no idea. I it. That's the only way I know him. That's him? Yeah, that's yeah. him. Wait a minute. Was it him? That's not him. That's not him. Not him. <laughs> There's no way that that is the same person. No, that's, um. oh, shit. What's that guy's name? 
No, that's not him. You're insane. I can't believe I said I mean, I knew what you were talking about. That's not, not him. <laughs> no, it's not. It's uh, Ashley can't run the show. Shit, what is that guy's name? <laughs> it's Blue Diamond Phillips. He just looks so much like him. They I don't, can't stop. They don't look alike. They, they look this guy's identical. neck is this guy's neck is absolutely normal. Benjamin Bratt has like 16 bones in his neck. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly you know watched this movie. I was like, he's not very attractive. He was just the homeless guy, though. He was very cute. Because <laughs> yeah, you couldn't see him. Yeah. <laughs> All of his flaws were covered up with trash. Um, <laughs> poor Eric. Um, a, another uh, uh, miscongeniality anecdote I have, uh, if you'd like to hear it, is um, okay. another, I think, probably one of the most classic things to come out of miscongeniality is the two scenes, but the first scene is really the funnier of the two when um she had been uh whisked out of her hotel room um to do pageant training and then on the way back uh she and eric are outside at the pool and he is like you know flirting with her and they get really close and uh she goes you think i'm gorgeous you want to date me and then he <laughs> eats a snickers bar in her face uh, and she is like really bummed. Um, when I turned 13, I got a, uh, <laughs> I got a birthday card and in it, my dad had written, uh, he used the word Marvy, uh, for Marvelous, but he wrote, uh, we think you're Marvy. We think you're great. We think you're blah, blah, blah. And then at the end it said, please read this in the miscongeniality song. Uh, uh, so he had he had wrote me a card to sing out loud, and so you know it's just it's it, you know this movie just like kind of in my life began to transcend more than just watching a movie. It was something that you know people were starting to relate to me, and so the the bond became even stronger. So, oh, I love that. Yeah, oh, my cool. my my dad. Uh, I talk about my dad a lot. My mom's sim actually very similar to me. This is not related to miscongeniality, but here's a snapshot on my life. <laughs> my mom once went, Ashley might know the story. My mom once went to New York City <laughs> with a couple of friends. She's a grown ass woman. She went to New York City with a couple of friends and she found the, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't be saying this on a podcast, doesn't matter. Uh, she found the address to her uh, <laughs> love of her life the, uh, the lead singer of her favorite band, It's Counting Crows, uh, went ah! to his hotel or went to his home and went in and they were and, and she and her friend were like, oh, hi, we're Adam's aunts. And we wanted to know if he if, if he was home. And the guy was like, yeah, he's home. Uh, let me go see uh, if he's available. And like he didn't answer. And he was like, oh, he must be in the shower, but I can buzz you up if you want. And my mom Freak, she like freaked out. She was like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. So she left. Um, so if anyone's wondering why I am the way I am, <laughs> uh, I, I do a, 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 a attribute a lot of it to my dad, but it's actually my mom and I are obsessive freaks of nature. Uh, it's fine. So, um, but my parents both have been very good about like, I'm a big fan of stories in general. You know, I, I, I read a lot. I love movies. I love TV. I've spent a lot of time watching TV. I play a lot of video games um, and it's all just because of the story and the characters and being able to um, learn about them and, and just enjoy their existence, whether it's for a two hour period of time or a 50 hour campaign or whatever the case may be. So <clears throat> my dad, especially my dad has been very good about like, all right, Rachel, you like Miss Congeniality? I'll throw it in your birthday card. Perfect. You're going to love it. And that's, <laughs> you know, that was all I needed. So uh, yeah, it was really great. Really good. I like that. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. He he was good about that with Gilmore Girls too, and I like I that's truly a whole different show. Um, I could spend sixteen years talking about Gilmore Girls because it's been my life for the past sixteen years. Um, but uh, yeah, my dad's been really really good about it. So, were you excited when they brought that back on Netflix? I was, uh, yeah, um, and I uh, the the revival was was fine. It was good. It, it couldn't. It was never going to be as good as the most of the original content, but it was great. And it was nice to see them back. And, um, I've watched interviews with Lauren Graham, who, you know, Lorelai is really a huge inspiration 
for how I am and, you know, my, my, my humor and the way that I do things. Uh, and I saw an interview with her and she said a really nice thing that was, you know, when I was first doing Gilmore Girls, I was 32. I was very young. It, it, I enjoyed it. It was a huge part of me, but it was my job. Um, and even when it was ending, I really did appreciate all the years I had, but I was ready to move on. And then she said, when the revival came back, it was like, I, 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 I was just relishing in the fact that I got to come back to this character because as I got older, I realized what a gift this character was. Right. And so she said, she went around set like, oh, it's so good to see you. I, I'm so happy we're here, you know? And I was like watching this interview, like sobbing. I was like, oh, thank you, Lauren. I'm happy to be here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, anyway, I could really talk about Gilmore Girls for a long time. I met Does her once, but that's a different story. <laughs> did you, at your wedding, did you um, uh, watch uh, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist? Oh, no, and you know, I kind of am waiting for the whole season to be available. I think I'd like to binge that one. Uh, we mm -hmm. live in the age of binging. She sings a bunch. So. She sings a bunch. I saw her, I met her uh, when she was Miss Adelaide in Guys and Dolls on Broadway in 2009. Adelaide? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was Adelaide. Uh, yeah, and was it 2000? Yeah, I met her in 2009. Um, and yeah, so she, I, I knew she could sing because uh, I, I saw the show and I, you know, she sang on Gilmore Girls a few times. So um, I, I, I would love to watch Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. It's uh, I watched the premiere episode because they they released it. What I don't know how I don't know what the whole thing was, but they released the first one episode digitally, I guess. Yeah, I what was going on? I just watched it on Hulu because they kept advertising. I was like, fine, I'll watch the goddamn show. <laughs> <laughs> so I watched it. And I have to say, like when I saw that that was her boss, I was like, oh my god, I love her, and yeah. I was so excited. And I was like, oh please don't cancel this. <laughs> I think it's actually getting decent reviews and i think a lot of people are watching it i, I don't know for sure i haven't like done them i use i'm one of those people who um I, i've watched a lot of tv and i and i don't really watch as much anymore but i keep up with it uh so yeah i watched the f first three episodes i think and then i kind of did stop not because i didn't want to watch it but like you i kind of wanted to be, i didn't want to have to wait every week to yeah. see what because it, it is ruined us I kept crying too because <laughs> I know I've heard it's very good. <laughs> like there's some. I've watched all the episodes. It's... Oh, you have? Is you it? Know? Yeah, it's, it's a fine show. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. her dad has like a a medical issue where he can't talk or anything or move. Oh, yeah. the, the, I was like, don't spoil it. But yeah, no, that's the that's the main character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's that and dude from about, um. Oh my god! While you were sleeping. Same character. And also in a, we just watched some, oh no, I watched something. He was in a Step Up movie. <laughs> I secretly, but also maybe not so secretly, love dance movies. I oh love the God, Step Up I movies. Hello. Same. And I need to own Center Stage again. I'm mad that's not on Blu-ray. Uh <laughs> Sp speaking, of, speaking of dancing, uh, Go ahead. one of the best scenes of Miss Congeniality. Oh my gosh. I think I know what you're going to say. Is the scene where they come out of the Statue of Liberty. Thank you. Oh, one my God. One in a million. <laughs> one in think, a lifetime. There's a lot of this movie that I do not remember. And I will I think that well, was I do. for Golden Globe, by the way. That music, that song. That song? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> what? Wonderful. I'm pretty sure that song was nominated for a Golden Globe. I think... Did it have two golden? Oh, gold I thought you said they played it when she won her golden gold. <laughs> like, oh no! <laughs> Could you imagine? Sandra's Ever. like, I know that I'm winning this for Blindside, but I'd like you to play that one song in Miss Congeniality. Uh, <laughs> she was also nominated for Best Actress for Miss Congeniality for a Golden Globe. Just FYI, she was. <laughs> yeah, for a comedy or musical. Yeah, for sure. I didn't, know. Getting, Sandy gets I didn't know I had <laughs> such taste. I, um, <laughs> I mean, she's excellent. She's an excellent actor. No, oh, she's great. Always. I just, yeah, um, yeah. No, but that is also just you know where she she sees Kathy Morningside with a briefcase, and then she goes down to see if it's a bomb, and then she has to ad lib like, "Oh, good, that's the microphone I used at home. Great." And then she has to like run out. It's just it's, <laughs> for, it's just so clever and so quick and witty. It's phenomenal. I will say, like when they started the dance, I 
almost spit out my drink I because I didn't remember it. And then like all of a sudden I'm like, what? And that I think that was the moment where I wrote down women are wonderful. Because <laughs> <laughs> That's the moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that was the moment in John's life. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm sorry. it was the note after that, but it was in the same kind of vein because I kept thinking like, the expectation that we have for these things like i mean if you're going to actually watch a miss something pageant of some sort i don't know what they have anymore but like it's just kind of expected that that's something that would happen it didn't occur to me that it would happen in this movie for some reason i was like oh they're all of a sudden all doing a choreographed dance like when did she learn that like <laughs> it's fantastic but i kept thinking like there is this weird expectation for women to just do these things. And it's like, why? But I mean, yay, because they can. I yeah. couldn't. If you, I mean, I have, because I, I was in um, a couple of things on stage. I don't, they're not shows, but they were shows. Um, and I, as soon as they wanted me to dance, I was like, oh, hell no. Are you kidding me? I can't dance. I can't do that. I can't do choreographed dancing. This is why I love dancing so much, because I think it's amazing that anybody can actually do any of that like even if it's just a simple thing i'm like no i don't know how to do that um but the, I, I was gonna say also going back real quick because i, I can't let it go um i sang adelaide's lament yeah and that's one of my favorite things i've ever done i was not scared to do that one <laughs> like i also did in the same show i did and i'm telling you i'm not going from dream girls mm, wow <laughs> It was horrifying. I mean, it, I think it was okay, but I mean, for me, it was horrifying. And I kept singing at a higher note, I guess. I don't know anything about notes or music or anything, so I don't know what I was doing, but um, I sang it more feminine sounding, if that makes sense. And then midway through, I had practiced so much to make sure I could do it right, that halfway through the actual performance, I had to do it lower because my voice hurt. <clears throat> So like right in the middle of the song, and I'm telling you, I'm not going. I go from Effie White to Barry White, and everybody thought it was hysterical, <laughs> and everybody thought it was supposed to be part of the show, and I was like, no, I just couldn't sing that high anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go down lower. Anyway, but Adelaide's Lament, oh my God, I love that song. I love that song. It's a good I, song. I had to bring that up. But um, but yeah, like the 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 crap that women are expected to do in general, just it. Yeah, well, I think that that, I mean, it's nice. What, one of the things Ashley mentioned was that, you know, yeah, there's some there's some stuff that doesn't age very well in that movie. But I think what people really like about it is the arc, you know, that the that the movie takes. And, uh -huh. you know, there's that scene where you kind of get a glimpse that, that Grace is realizing that, you know, femininity is a spectrum and it's, you know, something that everyone experiences a little bit differently. And, you know, she was so anti that because she thought that it, you know, was putting her in a box to be this stereotypical, you know, feminine woman. When once she got to the pageant, she was meeting all these other people, you know, and learning that, okay, they're not just Barbies, you know, they, they're, they're women who do, th do great things. And, you know, they, they, this is part of, you know, those great things that they do. And, they're not just cookie cutters. They're yeah, they're just because they're pretty, it doesn't mean they're dumb. Yeah, they're they're multifaceted women, and it's yeah. not a it's not a measure of their femininity. It's a measure of just who they are. Yeah, yeah story of my life, dude. Story, like, same. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, same. yeah, like there's so much pressure to either be a super feminine, like very pretty woman, mm -hmm. and like lose respect for your like intelligence. Yeah. Um, but like ultimately fit in with like larger crowds or be like a butch like woman well, and yeah. honor respect but also not really um be desirable to yeah. it's something that you know i've i've struggled with just you know i've i've always been very low maintenance i think i've is the word i've started to use which is not even I, that's not even what the, the term I want to use. No. I don't know what the right word to use is uh, because it is such like it's such a stark. It's still it still exists, you know. Yeah. Um, and so maybe, you know, um, 
uh, spoilers, I'm a therapist, everyone. So me, I look back <laughs> and, and I, I, I say, okay, 11 year old Rachel's watching this. What was 11 year old Rachel doing uh, at the time? She played softball. She, she was a quote, you know, a tomboy. She, she never really, you know, uh, felt like she could, was, you know, at the typical girl X, Y, and Z. And so when I was watching a movie of a person who, um, was all of those things, but then, you know, was able to accept this other way of living and then find at the end, you know, she finds this happy medium of here's how I like to dress, but I also recognize that I like to take care of my boobs. Uh, and which is a scene yeah. in the movie. Uh, cool. So, uh, and, and she likes to, you know, do all these other things and it kind of comes together where it doesn't have to be you pick one or the other. So 11 year old Rachel is watching this mostly cause it's funny, but she's also seeing how, you know, a woman can, pick and choose what she wants to be. It doesn't have to be one way or the other. Yeah. You can um, be a, a blend, a blended. Yeah. Woman. You can be one. Some days I, you know, I can put on a dress and feel really comfortable wearing a dress. And some days I can wear a, a, a hoodie with sleeves cut off that I made last night uh, right. and sit with it over my, <laughs> my head and play video games for 10 hours. Like it doesn't matter. You can be whatever you want. Um, and I think that a silly movie in a silly movie like this, that message can often get overlooked. Um, yeah. And I think, but it also gets, I think, I think because it's a silly movie, um, it has a weird way of like also slipping in, Yeah, you know, it's well, not I, like ramming it down your throat because it's adding all those silly faucets. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think to exemplify that, I remember when white chicks came out, <laughs> there was a very funny, um, uh, segment or something that I saw on the internet that was like some person going around a movie theater and saying, Hey, uh, hey did you see this Oscar nominated movie? And, and somebody was like, no, but I saw white chicks and that was great. And so the reason I bring that up is because something like Miss Congeniality that has a great message, the message is not easily lost, but because it's silly, it can get a little bit like, Oh, I'm, I'm remembering the jokes more than the message. Yeah. Miss Congeniality is going to bring a lot of different types of people to come watch a movie because it's easy. It's an easy watch. And so that type of message in a movie like that gets, you know, no disrespect to Oscar movies. I love Oscar movies. You know, they're phenomenal. Um, but this, a lot more people are going to see because it's easy to watch. And so that many more people are going to get a message like this across. That's true. I yeah. agree with that. I also want to say, as far as this type of movie, um, and especially from the time it came out and the ones that came before it, like, like She's All That was one that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. I think the thing that makes this one more acceptable even now, you know, I mean, even though I pointed out flaws. That's okay. <laughs> the one flaw that it didn't have was Sandra Bullock. Like she carries that character beautifully. Yeah. From point A to point B. And yeah. it's not an unbelievable thing to witness does that make sense like yeah I mean, yeah i get that she's pretty but i also understand that she at the beginning of this movie would never have thought that she herself was pretty correct like, it, so, it ec oh sorry no that's fine go ahead go ahead i don't know where i was going you okay. know the other thing I, I mean the other movie you know ashley mentioned she's all that the other movie that it reminds me of that came out not too much later uh and was more directed at kids is princess diaries i mean it's the same exact thing just oh a little bit different. yeah totally fair yeah uh yeah and so and and it's funny i was like i was 11 when i saw miss congeniality and that has so much more of a uh uh, uh made so much more of an impact on me <laughs> Princess Diaries came out the same year uh, that I watched it. But, you know, I, I just, I think the humor really is what I liked mo more about Miss Congeniality, but it's a very similar message and they do it in very similar ways. You know, Anne Hathaway is absolutely stunning, but in the beginning of Princess Diaries, she's like every nerdy kid on the block. So yeah, and um, super frizzy hair, <laughs> super frizzy, you know, she's got braces, you know, she lives in a firehouse, like what the hell? So um, I wanted that home. Oh, wanted same, it. I mean, same. She was in a lot of movies where they made her over. <laughs> <laughs> She's just got that like transitionable. Like she could go just either way. Um. <laughs> I feel like I hope she doesn't have a complex about it. Like, why do you keep casting me in these movies where I'm unattractive and you have to make me pretty? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, she auditions for them. So, 
I mean, I guess. Yeah, that's true. She's like, maybe, well, I'm ugly. So I... That's like, here's another makeover flick for you. It's kind of your thing. Well, I'm having heavy on, so... Also, we came totally full circle talking about Miss Congeniality, uh, Princess Diaries, and Bride Wars because, um, oh, uh, what's her? I forgot her name. Um, the one who was ugly in <laughs> in Sex in the City. Oh, uh, Candace Bergen. Candace Bergen, and then Anne Hathaway's in that one, and then we got Princess Diaries, and then back to Miss Congeniality. So you're all welcome. Ugly. <laughs> <laughs> she just was, she just uh, she had just aged. <laughs> Aged and and I will say this: Michael Patrick King is a dick because he photographed her from the worst angle, and I was like, "Dude, like you're gay. What? Why'd you put the camera there? And you knew this Dude. was gonna be projected on a gigantic screen somewhere. Hello, you're not a very nice gay man. That's for sure. Um, I would never have done that to Candace Bergen ever. Just for the record, I would put a soft focus on that thing. I would <laughs> Like I need some Vaseline on this lens real quick. Cause... Real quick. Girl. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I'm about to pay no disrespect. And the angle, I'm telling you, the angle of, if you ever watch that, the first Sex and City movie, the angle on Candace Bergen is so rude. I was, I was mad. Is it a very like steep, low angle? Yeah, it's- to Make her look like a witch? They started it where she was sitting at a desk across from Carrie, perfectly fine. But when she got up and walked over to Carrie, they didn't really change the angle. They just moved the camera up. Ooh. And I was like, Ooh, why, why would they do that? Like, raise that camera up with and a frame that you probably have sitting somewhere. Her Bride Wars contract was like, no camera shots below my chin. Yeah, <laughs> please don't. And they didn't give her that airbrushing. That's, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> they did that stuff. They reversed the Carrie Bradshaw. And she looks fantastic. Yeah, she said it's fake. Which I also I have a huge problem with that. I, I, it's... I was just talking about this with Erica. I think like I was mentioning watching Absolutely Fabulous, um, because I'm watching that now after Friends, and I have to say like I'm kind of mad because I think that my attachment to that show and watching it for so long is why I think I'm fat all the time because they keep saying how fat Eddie is in this show. And I'm like, she's not fat. And she's 40 in the first season. So I'm like, I'm 40. I'm as old as Eddie now. Like, and I'm like, wow, they keep calling her fat. And she keeps calling herself fat and she's not fat. So I'm like, is this where I get a text to Erica? I was like, I think this is where some of my fat complex comes from. Like, I think it's from this show that I love. Yeah. When they call <laughs> small people fat and you're like, wait a minute. I'm like, wait a minute. What? And, um, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> I totally got lost. Oh, but the, the, the way that they do that to people, like if you keep constantly putting that kind of image on a screen, like, like telling people that that woman's fat when she's not fat or airbrushing people that are older to make them look younger, it's like, it's kind of wrong in a weird way. Let's like Annie Lennox, she keeps talking about, I mean, maybe not right now, but she talked about, in 2005 or something, whenever, I don't know. It was a long time ago. <clears throat> but she talked about um, her new album that was coming out and how she was photographed as her age and she didn't want to have it airbrushed or fixed because she didn't want to have this ridiculous version of herself that wasn't real. She's like, I'm older, I'm getting old. This is what I look like. So if you don't like yeah. it, that's not my problem. And I kind of love that. It's like, and then you got Annie Lennox on one side, who I love, and then you got Madonna on the other side, who I also love. And it's like, ah, shit. What? <laughs> I'm stuck <laughs> in the middle of two people. One's fantastic, and one's an idiot. Like, what are you doing, Madonna? I don't know. Yeah, but she also does like those like close ups where you see like her mustache. Are you talking about Madonna? Like, yeah. She does yeah. like bad close ups. <laughs> The woman should never be allowed to put selfies on the internet. Like, I don't, I mean, even, even. If she doesn't care, why should she care? I mean. Let her have a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> Women <laughs> have mustaches, John. Just deal with it. <laughs> Madonna has always had a beard, not a mustache, a beard. <laughs> oh, apologies. Is that her husband or? No, no, no. I'm no, 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 no. Madonna <laughs> has a beard. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
Like, if you ever see that woman in high definition, girl, she's got a full on beard. Like, there's long hair growing off of her face. Um, I don't, I mean, the thing that bothers me about Madonna is that the, she says one thing, but then she's trying to portray a different thing. Like, she talks about ageism all the time and how she doesn't want to be a victim of it. And I'm like, but then why are you doing all this to yourself? She has a, a new butt, which I wasn't even aware of because she doesn't really show it off. But apparently she has gotten a, a butt implant. And I'm like, first of all, why? Because why? Pressures of Hollywood, John. You can do what you want, but why? You had a perfectly fine butt. Your legs are amazing. They still are. Your arms, you know, I don't want my arms to look like that when I'm older. But <laughs> her This just took a turn. I'm allowed to say it because I love her. Oh, and she can have. She can have. Uh, apologies. I didn't know. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I. I just. I think th there is a. She has her own issues, so I guess we don't have to bring those up. But I just think there's an issue with that in general. And I don't remember why any of this came up. Oh, the airbrushing. No, but British. Uh, British TV. I've noticed uh is cool with aging women which i also think is is cool well they got maggie women smith age hello say again they got maggie smith over there they have to be okay with it <laughs> she's like 400 years old also their their queen is also like super old and it's not like they're gonna touch her up in every picture you know what i mean that'd be super disrespectful let her fly the way she is because exactly. she is fucking queen yeah but if she wasn't the queen make up for days <laughs> <laughs> it's like i would love somebody to do vogue airbrushing on the queen and see what it looked like <laughs> just just out of curiosity she looked like claire foy oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, no oh, he is old good lord <laughs> no. i mean bad way but like Jeez, she's old. I yeah, mean, she's old. but but she's also a representative. So like, be cool with it because like, Queen does it. I you think know? that like similar to the things that didn't age well between Miss Congeniality and Friends and et cetera, et cetera. Um, aging in general is um, it's not probably it's probably the least accepted thing of all the things we've talked about. You know, up to this point. Yeah. Um, I think that it's still something that is ha pun half intended covered up um, and cool and not um, it's not really directly addressed like if you're an old person still you're a good looking old person you know what I mean so yeah. um, I, I, like even you know in I'm just I'm trying to think of examples someone like like jennifer aniston is not old but she's older than she was um and and she looks great and but the other night i was i don't know where i was maybe it was here i don't know but well probably was here i haven't left my house um but somebody uh i think my husband must have been watching something and and i said jennifer aniston looks great and he says yeah she looks the same and i was like no she looks like she's 50 like but she's supposed to look like she's 50 she's 50 like it's okay when I'm 50 yeah. I hope I look like I'm 50 because otherwise I'm not natural or I'm dead so I hope that I would I'm okay with getting older because that's what I'm supposed to do yeah no I think the uh, same same sort of thing uh we were watching the morning show and Jennifer looks amazing and and I went up to my screen <laughs> like I do with the sex in the city movie <laughs> And she did not have airbrushing. <laughs> no, she just, I mean, she's just very attractive. I mean, she she's just, a good looking lady. Yeah. Um, I mean, when she was on Chelsea Handler uh, doing an interview, you could tell she was aging, but it didn't look bad. No. You know I mean? and, just, okay. and I think even right. for women who, and men who age and they look bad, it's like, all right, well, you're 70,000 years old. You're going to look like you're 70,000 years old. I see pictures yeah. of old people and I'm like, you look gross because you're 100 years old and I hope I look gross when I'm 100. Sorry. Dude, did I ever tell you when I was working in the cafe, I was helping an older dude. He had to have been in his late 40s, early 50s. And 
Uh, there was that Demi Moore like cover when Demi Moore came back and like super fit, and she was on the covers of magazines oh. on like the pool side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was the only person, and so I I took this dude's transaction and then I started making his drinks, and he like turned back because he was looking at the magazine and he was like, "Can you believe it?" And I was like, "But." Because, you know, I'm not good at small talk. And he, he was like, he was like, look at her. And I was like, yeah, like, she looks good. Sure. Yeah, she looks good. And he was like, yeah, but she's like 50. And I was like, so what? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I was like, it. yeah, yeah, she looks great. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Because I thought that he was like trying to tell me that Demi Moore is hot because she's hot. And I just really don't know how to talk to people because I don't care about these people and whatever their thoughts are. And <laughs> and then he was like, she should really leave that for younger people. And I was oh. like, you are what's wrong. You are what's wrong with people. You're why people what? feel bad about themselves. That what? was She looks great. <laughs> That was the reaction people had to the Super Bowl performance. Um, because JLo oh, yeah. JLo and Shakira killed it. Uh and oh, they're yeah. both old. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but they showed too much skin. It was too scandalous. Are you joking? I, I outraged and I was like, whoa, God, I forgot his name. Bruce Springsteen slid his crotch into the entire camera of his Super Bowl performance and nobody talked about that <laughs> did you see the memes where they like started shaming olympic divers <laughs> for having their shirts off <laughs> no 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 <laughs> oh, um but yeah no, can you believe michael phelps <laughs> well he's whatever um, he's just proof that you can smoke weed and still achieve your dreams <laughs> I think Seth Rogen is a good example of that. Yeah. Um, oh, I would say that too. Cheech and Chong. <laughs> what? Cheech and Chong are just banking on smoking weed. That's fine. They That's can, their whole shtick. Yeah. They oh, just get man. high, go on the mass Singer. They're great. Oh. They're on Masked Singer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Cheech was, yeah. Che uh, no, it wasn't Cheech. It was Chong. It was, it was Chong. Apologies. Tommy Chong. Yeah. I watched it. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I yeah, I ageism. Yeah, I haven't finished the, the last season, but um, what am I saying? I was going to say something. Um, Is there oh, any I was gonna, the, the about the age and uh, um, I remember, and this was a lot. Again, most of my references are from like probably twenty years ago, so I, I don't keep up with anything. But I, Cheryl Crow did a magazine cover of something i can't remember what it was and she did an interview later about it and she was talking about the pressure that they put on these young pop stars to be provocative and um you know like britney spears and stuff like that which who are young at the time and now they're old <laughs> yeah now they're <laughs> my age or whatever i don't know but they um <laughs> now they're my age they weren't always my age they've always been your age, <laughs> always been my age but yeah whatever no uh, they caught up <laughs> <laughs> they look great uh <laughs> throw that out there they look wonderful um but anyway the, but the interviewer was like well but you were just on a magazine cover in your bikini and she's like yeah because i'm 40 she's like i'm allowed to do that <laughs> like I'm a mature woman that's aware of who she is and what she has to present. Like these girls are told at a very young age to do this thing and they're doing that thing to get the attention or whatever, but it's, it's just depressing. I think that's why um, right now, I think Billie Eilish is a fantastic role model for young people because she's what, 16? First of all. Is she? Like, if young, yeah. I think young. Yeah, I think she's still 16, or she might be 17 now, but she um, she doesn't wear anything provocative at all. Like, I, I love the fact that she's, I mean, she's dressed in, like, Chanel or whatever. What is the thing she always wears? Gucci? Chanel? What, I don't know, whatever. I'm not good at that. But Yeah, but it's, it's very much baggy clothing. But it's all, yeah, it's all just big baggy clothing and it looks like it's couture. Like, I think it's made for her specifically, but I just love that she's not asking for something 
ridiculous. She's asking for something ridiculous on the opposite side of the spectrum. Yeah. Like it's, it's, I love that. I'm like, can you please be more present? Thank you, please. <laughs> and her, I love her music. So whatever. Um, I was going to say something else too, but I can't remember what it was. So who knows? It was fantastic. It was amazing. You were all blown away by it. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> my insights are just nuggets of gold <laughs> oh yeah morning show we were talking about that and she looked fantastic and uh, but jason was saying like they could do a friends thing now and she would look you know like i mean she would look older she would look appropriate to whatever but she still looks fantastic like, yeah they all yeah Oh, I'm convinced Courtney Cox looks the same. She does. She's got yeah. a lot of plastic and surgery, that, though. The, has she? I think she has. Yeah. <laughs> All the men are going to look old, like Joey. Yeah, but you know what? Matt LeBlanc looks good. David Schwimmer looks good. He was just on Will and Grace. He looks, oh, was he? Yeah. Oh. He was really good on that, too. Um, Deborah Messing looks good. Character. What's that? Deborah Messing <laughs> looks good. She, oh, yeah. She looked amazing. I loved her when they brought that back i mean uh uh karen what's her name um, megan, Mullally. megan Mullally. thank you she, i said it first although, oh oh <laughs> okay. so we, have to, we have to touch on uh miss congeniality too briefly go <laughs> you can't mouth no it's an audio <laughs> i here's my mouthing um i don't know i literally could not here's tell you mouthing. anything about miss congeniality too except that eric's not in it yeah and also that it's armed and fabulous yeah That's oh, oh, oh uh this was chandler's favorite movie on friends by the way miss congeniality he watched it a lot <laughs> I, not surprisingly, uh, I'm very much like Chandler Bing. <laughs> Miss Chandler Bong. Miss Chandler Bong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, um, anyway, no, I wanted to talk about it because uh, I was telling you guys earlier off the air that my Blu ray has both and it automatically prompts you to watch the second one when the first one's over. So I just did. And I got so distracted, I had to turn it off because I was doing something else. But um, don't tell my job. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I was um, noticing a bunch of things like right off the bat. Like I haven't finished it. I mean, I'm, I might be 30 minutes into it. And there's so many things that I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> about that movie. And like I said, I haven't even finished this because I don't remember what it's about. I did not. I, I, I mean, I, I barely remembered that she actually got Miss Congeniality at the end of the first movie. And I actually cried a little bit because I was like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> but, um, so. The title of the movie. The, I, I did, it didn't even, I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's the name of the movie. <laughs> Oy vey. <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm lost half the time. I don't know what's going on. Um, but, so the, the beginning of the second movie uh i was kind of wondering how because i i looked at the credits and i was like benjamin's not, not in this one so how are they going to deal with that and they dealt with it very weird like she was uh, dating him at the opening and she was coming home and she was preparing dinner for them to eat and then he gives her a phone call to break up with her and i was like wow like that's how you're going to get rid of this guy? Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's such it, an awkward thing. It was just kind of like a, to like make it happen and then like move on though. Yeah, to move right? on. I mean, yeah. it kind of it gave you the whole reason for the plot of the movie, I guess, but. I what was the plot of the movie? Was that she had to go to Las Vegas or no, 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 no I'm sorry. That's later. Uh, they were going to have her become the face of the FBI. As like the face of the FBI? She was an undercover cop. The last well, thing she needs to be is the face. Hello. Oh, that was what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have played. <laughs> <laughs> no. She, <laughs> she, um, what was I going to say? Oh, crap. Now I forgot it. 
she, no, they were gonna have her become the face of the FBI because her very first, uh, uh, what do you call it, undercover situation in the second movie, her cover was blown because she was, and I kept thinking at the opening of the, of the second movie, like before the credits were even done, I was like, how would she be in another undercover situation? Because everybody knows who she is. She was all over television and she's right. really well loved. So I was like, how are they going to do that? And <laughs> I love that they, they actually did put her into an undercover situation where her cover was blown because they recognized who she was. And I was like, oh, well, that's how they get rid of that. Then they want to make her the face <laughs> of the FBI. And the reason she goes to finally do the, co- uh, the face of the FBI thing was because Benjamin broke up with her. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, well she's just trying to rub her face in all of his business now. So now he has yeah, to see her yeah. all the time. Which, by the way, I have to say that me not knowing anybody's names ever, it was amazing that I was able to pick up that they were transferring Benjamin to Miami. Because I was like, who? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, the look on Sandra's face was like, oh, that's oh, Benjamin. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> also, his name is Eric in the movie. His name is Eric. <laughs> I keep wanting to say Eric Bana, but that's not right. Because that's the Hulk. But <laughs> well, the the other, the first Hulk. Isn't that Eric Bana? Isn't that the Hulk? Well, now it's Mark. Oh, or now it's um, what's his face? What's the name of the Hulk? Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner. No. Eric Bana. Who was plays the Hulk? Eric Bana, uh, the guy yeah. who was in Fight Club, and then the other dude. Yeah, what's the other? What's the current Hulk? Mark Ruffalo. Mark, Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, there we go. He was naked in a movie. It was fantastic. Actually, the movie was bad, but it was fantastic to see him naked. Um, cool. That's on the Criterion uh, channel right now. <laughs> I did not watch it. Although I thought about fast forwarding to that scene. Um, anyway, so I don't know what I was saying. Oh yeah, but that was it. I was just wanted to bring up the fact that they wrote him out of there so quickly. And I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. no, no, I did want to say also that I didn't like what direction they had her character go in for the second movie. I thought it was kind of um, stupid. That's why I block it out of my existence i mean like i said i'm still gonna finish it when we're done with this (laughs) i mean i watched it i've seen it and then i disowned it from my life i marie condoed it and i said this doesn't bring me joy and i'm removing it (laughs) and i didn't i didn't say thank you for your time in my life that that sounds familiar what is that marie condo marie condo uh, she's the she's, um she's a japanese uh uh woman who purges homes. purges homes of people of people's belongings uh and you do it in a way that is um meaningful so um hello ibuprofen thank you for the time that you spent in my life but i no longer need you you're just taking up space uh and yeah. then you get rid of it and so but but what you do is you say um Sarah Manning pop, you bring me joy. So I'm going to keep you uh, around. And so you, you make conscious decisions of what it is you'd like to get rid of. Yeah. she. Yeah. You have to like touch and think about every item. Yeah. And uh, it's in the things that spark joy. It's in the Gilmore girls revival. Oh, I, I meant to mention that I, I didn't finish that. Okay, it's also a Netflix here. series. Uh, I will see you uh, <laughs> next. Uh, <laughs> it's not on purpose. I just I, I started and honestly I I don't remember what happened, but I never finished it. And then I did that with a lot of things. It's I not mean, on. Purpose. Yeah, I've I'll done it. it at some point. I but honestly, with me, I kind of wanted to watch the original series again and then watch it because I get lost at nearly everything. I mean even these Marvel movies or even Star Wars movies. I mean, I've seen those how many times and I still have to really rack my brain to be like, wait a minute, who's what now? And where were they at last movie? I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know. They were doing something. Somebody was doing somewhere. I don't know. It was, it was weird. <laughs> That's why I thought this, uh, this movie, Miss Congeniality 2, where it picked up right where the other one left off. I was like, well, that's convenient. 
<laughs> watch it. They don't have to remember. Except much. the love you believed in at the end of Miss Congeniality no longer exists and was broken up. No, I was kind of time. mad that she she kind of became a ridiculous person in her new role at the uh, yeah. episode, whatever. That's why the original is superior in um, pretty much every way. I mean, I, I can get behind that so far. Yeah. I haven't finished it. I remember, though. I know there's a great costume at some point. Yeah, she has feathers and she's in Vegas, I think. Yeah, because that costume reminds me of the album cover for Annie Lennox's Diva. <laughs> so, of course, I'm going to like the outfit. <clears throat> Anything that makes me think of Annie Lennox is good. In fact, Sandra Bullock makes me think of Annie Lennox all the time because she, for some reason, there was a string of movies of hers where Annie Lennox songs were in the movie. And I kept thinking, oh, I bet Sandra Bullock loves Annie Lennox. <laughs> So every time I see Sandra Bullock, I think, oh, she loves Annie Lennox. Even though I have no idea if that's true or not. But this was the movie, uh, by the way, that she uh, did the boxing to uh, Salt and Pepper song. And I was like, I had remembered her doing that in some movie and I had no idea which one it was. And so I was super excited when I saw that scene. I was like, oh, it's this movie. And I yeah. Know. That's when she fights her microwave and her bed. Yes, because yes. I, I thought it was... Um, I thought Which was ad libbed, BT dubs. Oh, GG, Sandra. <laughs> GG. I thought it was the movie with Ryan Gosling. What was that? Murder by Numbers. For some reason, that was the movie I thought she put that in. Is that with Ryan Gosling? I think that was him. I was thinking of the proposal. Yeah, the proposal was with Ryan Reynolds. Oh, you're right. Apologies. <laughs> Murder by Numbers. Also a funny num- yeah. a funny movie. Yeah. Murder by Numbers? Uh, the proposal. Nope. <laughs> the proposal. <laughs> <laughs> that was supposed to be funny, but if you thought it was funny, I mean, that's that's fine. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> well, no, it was very funny. That was good. I like her. I like Sandra. I like Sandra. Okay. Big fan. What would you recommend, John? Me? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Um... Oh, geez. I would say Drop Dead Gorgeous. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Very- I thought of it while watching this one. Yeah. Rachel, do you have a recommendation for people who liked Miss Congeniality, year 2000? Um, if they like this, what would you recommend they watch? If they liked this, oh boy, uh, put me on the spot. Um, uh, John just did his, so you had like a moment. I, well, yeah, I did. Um, actually, you know what? I think this is, this is probably an easy out. Actually, I'm going to say one I already said, uh, just to further remind people that Miss Congeniality 2, Armed and Fabulous is not worth your time. Um, so you should watch The Heat, uh, which is a very funny movie. It has Sandra and Melissa McCartney, McCarthy. I don't know Melissa McCartney, but I do know Melissa McCarthy, uh, who was in Gilmore Girls. Um, And I'm going to say that you'll enjoy that one. Uh, It's very funny. The Heat. I love Mm -hmm. I think I would recommend, and I think this is like the inverted message, but still the same message, Legally Uh Blonde. Oh, good oh. message. Wow. GG. Yeah, where she's like super hot, but nobody thinks she can be smart. Y- yes. Yeah. I was going to go with Princess Diaries, but it was too easy, so. Hmm. I mean, you could have. Yeah, it well, can be that one too. Mention. <laughs> honorable mention. Uh, anyway, but yeah. Uh, how many flips or toes? <laughs> how many toes? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, we also rate things by toes now, Rachel. I don't know if you've been keeping up. Oh, okay. So how many toes? Well, I can't. I mean, it's it's very easy for me to answer. I'd give. Um, I 12, have ten toes. Twelve abnormal toes. I have t- I have ten perfect toes. I actually <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I have very nice feet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I give um, ten really nice toes out of ten. So you've got two feet on the ground. Okay. I've got two feet. Actually, two right now I have feet on the ground. Two whole feet, really nice, wonderfully arced feet uh, <laughs> on the ground. On a podcast today that was talking about the arch 
arches of your feet. Yeah. Well, they're coming full circle again. <laughs> they're real important. Yeah. A day full of circles. Yeah. Um, Ashley? I would say probably like a 6.5 to a 7. Not because it's not good. That's just where I like rate my feel goods. My feel good movies are like in there. I was going to say I would probably give it six and a half or seven. Yeah. I'd go somewhere. In there. Yeah. Not, I mean, you, you know, me, my 10 is Barry Lyndon. So I'm on a very different Terminator too. <laughs> <Very different, laughs> different, different, we're all in a different, uh, yeah. It's we all have a different genre. Too. We do. It's funny. Cause I think, yeah. you know, I've never rated via toe um before and so if i you know i, yeah, I it's like could you walk on it could you take a walk on this movie yeah. yes um and not that i need to give a justification but i i'm too biased to answer the question other than a 10 so that's why i'm giving it a 10 well no um, the 10 is perfect okay yeah, yeah but you know like the it's funny because the other movies that are on like in my top five are are Miss Congeniality is a very good movie, but it's actual like good movies like Moulin Rouge, uh, and and Carol, and like these like really like intense, really good movies. And then I'm like, Miss Congeniality is also one of my ten. So, um, I'm, I'm totally fine. Great. I love Bowfinger, and that's like not a good movie. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, I mentioned Thoroughly Modern Millie, and I would. I would say that most people would say that was not a, a fine feature. Like knowing that my favorite film is Barry Lyndon and then thoroughly modern Millie, it's like, it's like day and night. It's, it's yeah, no, And that's same. just the beauty of being a person. Like you, you like what you like and that's, that's it. And that's what yeah, life is. We're just here to celebrate you. We celebrate <laughs> all films, dog. Yeah. Heck yeah. Like I would say, I would, I don't know. I would say I would want to wear the costumes in both of those films. That would be me. I the love that it always goes back to the costumes for you. <laughs> it does. And the wigs. I want a wig. I want a big ass wig. Oh, that'd be so cool. Anyway. Um, what's what else do we do? Is that it? Oh, uh, we talk about our social media. So uh check us out at One Foot Podcast on all socials, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Facebook One Foot Pod or uh, One Foot on the Ground podcast, and you can email us at One Foot Podcast at gmail.com. And bye bye. Bye bye.